welcome to the course privacy and security in online social media this is week 8 uh, the first part of uh, week 8 so just look at the uh, profiles on the screen it has uh, first one facebook handle called punnurangam.kumaraguru the second one which is uh, twitter profile called punguru and the third one which is linkedin which is punguru again so the diff the question is can you actually match all these three urls or all these three profiles and say that it's the same profile that's the question that we're going to act, try and answer this this part of the week 8 course which is i have handles of uh, Uh, Punnurangam Kumaraguru uh, from Facebook, Punnuguru from Twitter, and Punnuguru from LinkedIn. Can I actually use this? What do I need to do to make sure that these three profiles are same, or to understand that whether these three profiles are same? There are multiple actually test cases, scenarios for it. I'll actually discuss a little bit uh, later in the lecture. Yes, the top one is my uh, uh, Facebook profile. The one on the bottom is my Twitter profile. The one, the next slide, this is my uh, LinkedIn profile, public LinkedIn profile. So, if you look at these three, uh, these three uh, images, you can actually see, or you can actually think about some features that you can use for deciding whether these three profiles are mine. For example, you can look at my profile picture in both. They seem to be the same thing. You can look at probably some uh, uh, friends that I have on Facebook and people who are following me, or the uh, uh, accounts that I am following on Twitter. You can look at some of these features to make the decision. Unfortunately, in the public profile that I have on LinkedIn, there's no profile picture, but there are details like associate professor at Triple IIT Delhi. Data Security Council of India, uh, Carnegie Mellon University, and connections like that. For example, my personal website. The personal website from here may be actually linked to my website at Triple IIT Delhi. So you can actually make all these connections to find out whether this is actually the same PK which is both in uh, uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter. I'm sure many of you are listening to this lecture. Also have uh, multiple accounts. So the question that you can ask yourself uh, is: How do I put? How do you put your own accounts uh, together to find out whether they're same or not? Okay. So that's the problem that we look at. So tracking social footprint identities across different social network, which is finding out whether they are the same. And as always in the past, also in the lectures, I've said uh, many of these topics that I am uh, discussing in the class. It's all connected to some research done. So here is a paper that uh, I'm going to be talking uh, in detail today, which is other times, other values, leveraging attribute history to link user profiles across online social networks. So the big advantage of actually knowing these uh, connections, whether they are same, is actually very, very useful. Let's look at this slide. Please look at this slide, which says about duplicating audience. Where, if I went, uh, so in this case, there are 437,000 likes on a Facebook page, and about 153,000 followers that the account has. And about eight hundred thousand followers that the handle has on uh, LinkedIn. So the question is, if I were to send an advertisement, if I were to actually send uh, some information to these uh, users, will it be same? Will it be a sum of all of them, or will it be something smaller? Because there could be some of these four hundred and seventy thousand profiles. The same users are actually on 153,000 in Twitter, and the same users are actually on LinkedIn. For example, I'm sure some of you uh, 
uh, in listening to this lecture will have accounts on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. If you have account on all the three and if PK wants to send you about information on PSOSM on NPTEL, it's actually useless to send the information to the same handle which is let's take Sonu Gupta in uh, uh, Facebook, Sonu Gupta in uh, follow uh, in Twitter and Sonu.Gupta24 in uh, LinkedIn because it's the same person. We're actually wasting our resources in sending this information about PSOSM on NPTEL to the same person in all the three accounts. So that's the problem to actually look at. So the question is, people have multiple accounts on social media and sending information to all of them. You want to send information to the people only once. So that's the goal here. But there are many test cases for this problem. I think at the end of this lecture, I actually talk about some of the test cases in law enforcement agencies and in other situations. A technical challenge for actually putting them together is also harder is because if you look at some networks, you get actually details which are uh, something more personal. In some networks, they are not actually that personal. For example, uh, in, the, in the top part, I'm, I'm showing you here about YouTube uh, being a video sharing uh, service. You can get actually opinions, you can get what they like, what kind of videos uh, they actually saw. In Tinder, which is the dating site, little bit of personal information is available. Connecting it to LinkedIn, which is professional, and Facebook, which is also personal details. Right? So the question is, what information can you actually collect from these different social networks, which have different types of information? How do you put them together and create, uh, answer the question that we started off with, finding out whether multiple handles are same or different. Okay. I hope that's clear. So the question about profile linking, uh, what are the approaches that we can take? The approaches that we can take is uh, list out common attributes, which is Facebook has uh, my gender, my age, my university that I work at, places that I got my uh, degrees from, Twitter has my followers, my, uh, my profile again, the website that I'm uh, connected to, the place that I work, all that information. We can actually list down all common attributes, compare the attributes, which I think in the example that I showed you, I showed you profile picture being same, profile picture being same on Twitter and on Facebook, we can actually compare that. Compare attribute values using syntactic, semantic, or graph based, which is what am I typing in uh, 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 on the social networks, what content am I posting, and uh, what, are, what is the details in my profiles, and the graph. Graph is basically my networks, my friends in Facebook, my followers, followings in Twitter. And then high similarity, if, if there is a, a, in my case, in the example that I showed you, it's exact the same picture, profile picture on both the places. If things are like that, it's most likely the same person. Right? And then the question is also, you can, you can, so one thing that I'll talk about a few slides later is not just that you want to look at these details only that is now, but you can actually look at details that are past also which is you don't have to look at only the post that I did now or the profile picture that I had now or the handle that I have now. You can actually go back in time and look at the post that I've done and you can derive some information even from that. For example, one thing I'll show you also is uh, people actually change their user uh, handles sometimes. So can you actually use that information to actually derive whether it's the same profile or not? Now, if you look at this graph, this graph is actually showing you the changes that has happened in terms of just using it. The point is, is just now said, which is uh, some details of the profiles can actually change over time. It's not that you have to look at the details that are now, 
but you can actually look at the past. That's the problem. That's the question that we're trying to answer here. So here, 376 million users were tracked and the graph is showing you x-axis to be the time and y-axis to be the percentage of users with multiple uh, screen names, which is names that they have changed. For example, in my case, currently I have Ponguru, whereas in the past, let's take if I would have had Ponguru123 or Professor at IIIT Delhi, all those things are actually getting captured here, which means uh, the num some 7% of the people had uh, different changed their usernames. Sometimes the data that we collected in around uh, January 2011. That's the way to infer. And then there is another peak around January 2000 or February 2010. The two peaks in this graph are basically showing you that what the first peak is showing you about between five and six percent of users that was that we were tracking the handles were changed and about 7% of the account uh, user handles were changed around January 2011 or December 2010. Okay. So this basically shows you that people change accounts, people change their handles. I don't know, uh, again for people uh, uh, listening to this lecture, think about yourself if how many people have actually changed uh, the handles that you use. In Facebook, I think you can change it only once, but in Twitter, you can change it as many number of times you want, which means it's actually possible to keep changing your account every now and then. So, the same, continue on the same uh, uh, thread, which is about details changing for the users. So, in this case, if you see uh, the, <coughs> the x axis. Uh, is the uh, details of the user, which is username, name, description, location, language, zone, and profile picture. This is basically showing you, and the y-axis is showing you the percentage of users, which is in this case, uh, 8 million users were actually seen for a period of two months. What does it mean to uh, for the username? User mean and uh, about six or seven percent of the users change their username at least once, which is there were two values for these users. That's the way to read the graph. Let's go to the uh, good one or, or the one that is uh, higher in terms of profile picture. If you see, of the eight million people that were tracked, about forty percent, thirty thirty five percent of the people change their profile picture three times at least right so that's the one that is there in the blue just on top of it which is yellow which is about 40 to 6 20 percent of the people change profile pictures for four times and about 10 percent of the people changed it five times which means in the period of two months 20 percent 10 percent of the people change their profile pictures at least five times. I'm sure uh, uh, you can relate it uh, to the behavior that you have, which is how many times have you changed your profile. In my case, probably I changed my profile picture once a year or once in a year and a half or so. But profile picture changing, I've seen many people change their profile picture pretty often. So that's what is reflecting on this, uh, the rightmost thing. And the leftmost thing was username. Similarly, for name, people have changed the names. And if you look at about 35% of the people are changing their description, which is saying professor at IIIT Delhi, at least two times uh, in the data that was collected. Nobody changes language. Nobody's changed. Very few people are changing the um, uh, zone, time zone that they are in. Okay. That just shows, so basically this graph and this graph, uh, the, the slide uh, 11 and slide 12 is basically showing you the change in information in the account. Okay. So here, this is just an example to show you how people change their handles. So for example, in my case, I have Twitter now, that's how I registered. 
uh, which is T1. Whereas later I could change my uh, user handle as Pongulu to become explorer underscore PK. And then at time 3, I could change my account as logical chameleon for that matter. Right? In that case, first one, it was actually identifiable Pongulu. You can probably derive it from my name. Second one, when I had uh, uh, Explorer PK, Explorer Professor, things like that, it's slightly getting uh, anonymized. And same thing as Logical Indian, also, it's getting anonymized. Right? And it is also unmatching. The point that uh, uh, is, is expressed in this slide is also to show that the handles Ponguru and Ponguru and T1 versus Punguru and Logical Chameleon and D3 is actually not possible to put together and find out. So there is, a, there is difficulty in putting these handles together. Okay. Good. Given to, so this is more a scientific way of asking the question, given two user profiles and the respective username sets, each composed of past and current usernames find the profiles refer to the same individual. That's the question that we're trying to ask, which is I give you Punguru and I give you Punguru's current user handle and the past user handles. Can you put them together and say that whether it is the same Punguru, which is a professor at B, a professor at Triple IT Delhi and Punurangam.kumaraguru in Facebook, Punguru in Twitter and Punguru in LinkedIn. Okay, so in this slide, uh, the point that is uh, described is that why only usernames? Why should we look at only the usernames as the uh, change, as the history, use the information from the history to actually study this profile uh, linking? Because it's unique, unique attribute for a user universally and publicly available attribute because it's not, you cannot make your user handle private and sometimes uh, 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 the lengths of the handles are also restricted so it's not a infinite space that I have to actually look for. And of course in terms of data collection, in terms of uh, details that we can actually collect from social media, it's easy for collecting user handles. So that's the reason why Studying usernames is the uh, way that we looked at. So this is slightly a dense slide. Let's go. To, uh, let's see how we can actually get this uh, slide across. So what is given? So let's go back to the problem statement. The problem statement is given two user profiles and the respective username sets, which is I'm giving you the handle of one guru. And can I actually find out? So that's what is actually explained in this slide, which is SNA, SNA, which is probably, which is in, in our case, let's keep it as Twitter, SNB, which is something, let's take, we keep it as Facebook. We're going to look at handles in these two networks and find out whether the handles that we're looking at are same. Right? So we look at features for example that we said earlier profile picture uh, um, location of the account use these details as the features and find out whether uh, they are actually the same user so here is a one very very interesting way and very easy way actually to find out whether it's the same user. There's a low probability that uh, this feature may not be uh, useful, but majority of the times this feature is actually very, very helpful. What is this? This is Twitter handle, which is which says uh, in this case L U Z Y, and this user is actually connecting her own Tumblr account in this page. Right. So this basically allows you to say that. If I were to find out this handles uh, Lucy's uh, uh, Tumblr account, I should just look at the profile. Same way in, in my case, if you go, uh, I think my LinkedIn or my uh, Facebook has my Twitter account also there. Which means I have explicitly 
specify that self-identification, which is I am identifying myself that I am <coughs> this in Twitter and I am also this in Tumblr, which I am sure some of you may have done. In my case, I definitely have my uh, precog.tripleid.edu.in uh, URL in my uh, Twitter account. There's also another way this self-identification happens, which again, I do it very often. Uh, I post pictures on Facebook. I take the link of the album and then I go post the link to the album in my Twitter account, which now, if you see, you can actually connect that Ponguru, uh, at Ponguru in Twitter account is the same account which is actually posting the pictures on Facebook, which is this album, and therefore they should be actually the same people. Even without the profile picture, even if my profile picture is different, you can use this to make the decision that it's actually the same user. I hope that's making sense. Uh, as I said, there's a small probability that this may not be uh, true, but majority of the times this is actually pretty true. So in this case, we also have seen like, say, uh, if you person is not active on Twitter, but active on Facebook, then how can we link? Not active, I don't think so. Activity, uh, frequency actually matters here, right? Because let's take. Uh, yeah, I mean, if a person is updating something on Twitter, but may not update the same thing. Oh yeah, sure, Twitter. sure. If the person doesn't update the same thing on it, then it's okay. Then there is a, there's going to be always a problem. But if the person does it, it doesn't have to be the same like what I'm saying. Linking of the uh, pictures, it could be the same post at the same time in for both pages both accounts. Even that's useful, right? If the person is not posting, then I, I can't help you. But if the person has the same profile picture, same description and things like that, I can put them together. But if the person is doing the same, like for example, if you see my post, right? I'll do 10.30 on Facebook, 10.30 on Twitter and 10.30 on LinkedIn, all at the same time. And it will all be the same content. So now it's easy to find out, right? Even though my, let's take if I change my Twitter account to instead of Punguru, I change it as Professor at Triple IT. Still, you can actually make it because it's the same content at the same time. Okay. If I have a Facebook account, I use it for very often, but I never update anything on Twitter. Then is there any possibility that we can link with accounts? So, so there is nothing on the account, uh, Twitter account to relate to. Sure. So if there is no content on Twitter, then I think it's slightly hard. But if the account has some details about the account, let's take description, um, like user or profile picture and things, so then it's easy. But then the, uh, I like to stress the argument even slightly uh, for, further away, which is that if the person does not even have a Twitter account, what do you do? also a problem right so you just went to the extent of saying oh the person does not have activity but if the person does not even have a handle then it's even harder right? it may happen that i mean i have my actual Twitter account or someone else had a account of me by my name yeah yeah so here right ponguru is my account uh, in my in in twitter and i have my facebook account as sonu gupta what do you do you just can't put them together right at least from the handles and this you can't put them together but that's why we need to use all these features uh, to put them together in terms of profile picture post that you do but if you're conscious enough to keep this account to independent then I think it's impossible to do it. And, uh, but, but companies like Facebook can do which is beyond what we are talking about in this lectures because they can actually look at it from the IP address they can actually look at it from the time of access and still do Right. Okay. So if you look at uh, here, this is showing you ways by which you can actually collect this data. So here, uh, the, the one on the top is showing you that keep track of a handle. For example, you keep track of Ponguru at now, 
what 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 my handle is what post am i doing every day you come and look at this handle and then you say that oh suddenly it changes to professor triple i professor at triple i t you can say that the change has happened right because what have how is the data that is getting stored in twitter the basic idea in twitter is that they give you a unique id that doesn't change right that id is associated with the handle you can change that handle so now you keep track of this id and you know that this id 24 just making it simple 24 is actually punguru now you can actually keep track of this 24 always and then when punguru changes to professor at the polit then you add update it your into your database saying that or oh, this handle actually changed and uh, another way of looking at it is the url change which is the person actually changes the url in terms of uh, connecting to the other accounts like the tumblr one that i said somebody is actually going and changing i am keeping track of tumblr accounts also i am keeping track of other accounts there the profile is actually changing their uh, description to say that my tumblr account changed or in tumblr they are saying my twitter account changed so this this track again you can actually say so here is an example of users whose accounts have changed whose handles have changed user id so as i said before 24 in this case is 5959294211 that's the handle uh, that's the user id we keep track of track of that and if you look at the names that this handle has changed it went from b big e a s y e underscore to rezy11 to epicetic underscore to something else to swamp soon x y swamp okay. right it changed 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 times it is i should change the handles and if you look at the same user account in instagram this seems to have also changed four times but there's a connection between the user handles that uh, the the person had in twitter and in instagram also right you can actually look at this to also make sense that oh, there is this swarm soon in instagram that swarm soon underscore in twitter is it the same person like for example i'm sure many of you were who have uh, common names for example punnurangam kumaraguru is not so common so if you want to create an account probably you're the only one who can get the handle but let's take srishti gupta is so common that if you want to create an account now on any of the social networks you're not going to get srishti gupta so you're probably going to get srishti gupta 1 2 3 sonu gupta 2 4 6 1907 things like that so, so therefore you can actually use this information also that some parts of the you uh, handle is very similar so are they the same people i you could use this uh, jakarts distance and there are many other edit distance there are many other measures by which you can find out whether the how far is the handle from each other can be also used to say whether it's the same person so here is here is one version of the same uh, slide that i showed you earlier which is usernames are collected which is what we discussed now now we'll look at some features that you can actually use to put them together and then we'll find out about the prediction side this is the same slide i had about 5 or 8 sides before on the whole uh, uh, process of actually identifying whether the handles are same so here are the sets of features that uh, uh, parvi actually used in our work user name creation behavior uh, she she just categorized the uh, features into different buckets similar length in terms of user name similar choice of characters uh, similar arrangement of characters so punguru uh, in uh, 
Twitter and P O N G U R E twenty four uh, in LinkedIn and temporal behavioral feature also evolution of length. I started with six. Now it is seven. Now it is eight. What kind of characters are changing? Evolution of choice of characters. If you see here, all these features, some of these features can be discussed here. If you look at the uh, account details, when probably this use started, both Twitter and Instagram was just the same. And then after some point in time, the person had Episeric the third in Twitter as the same as the second one in Instagram. Uh, fifth in Twitter is very similar to the uh, third in Instagram. So you can find this evolution and make something out of this also. Occasional reuse patterns. So common username, the same username being used. Uh, and, and features temporal uh, ordering, again characters, how they are placed. You can use all of these features, which is one of these calling it more as a behavioral patterns across usernames. You can use these features to say whether the uh, handles are safe. And the uh, number of feature sets that we had was about 56. And if you remember the account, if you remember the a trust and credibility section, which is I think week one or week two that we saw, then we actually saw 45 features in tweet thread and in uh, trust content and Twitter. We saw about 45 features that Aditi used in terms of actually finding out whether this particular uh, content that is posted on Twitter is credible or not. Uh, so now we have uh, the details from the users, details from the handles, what are the uh, changes in the features and we can all, we can put them all together to create a set of users, candidate sets so to call and then actually make a judgment, give the, give the output as here is the probability of Sonu Gupta and Sonu Gupta 1 to 3 being same as point time versus Sonu Gupta and Sonu Gupta 0917 being the probabilities about 0.4. So you can actually make that uh, output, that's the last part. Now details, so until now it's more theoretical about how this could be done. Now let's just look at specific things what uh, Paradi did in terms of actually getting the uh, data from multiple social networks and finding out uh, how much we can actually do well. So let's look at some specific examples. In this case, we are looking at data, data collected between Twitter and Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr, Twitter and Facebook. Okay. Past usernames were collected, 21,000 positive pairs, which is uh, uh, details that collected from these social networks. And about past usernames available only on Twitter, but current usernames available on other profiles, it's about 140,000. So essentially the idea is that data was collected between multiple social networks of the current and the past user handles and how this was put together and what kind of mechanisms was used to find out uh, whether these handles are same. And it's the same um, diagram that I showed you before, take the handles, uh, understand some features, put the features together and create the uh, score and that's what is done here. Two methods are done, one is you just do only the features and then the other method that uh, we did was do a classifier and then apply it and to find out whether it's the same user. Okay. Here are the different methods that uh, was used which is exact match, right? exact match of the handles, substring match, and then classifiers, different classifiers were applied. And if you look at the first one and, uh, and the fifth one are the ones which had the maximum accuracy, which basically says that if you look at the handles, the way that the handles look similar and if they are exact match, there's very high probability that they are the same users. There's very 
less probability that there would actually be different users. And if you use the SVM classifier and then apply it on to find out whether they're the same users, using all the for, using all the 26 features that we talked about, there's high probability that uh, we'll be able to, about 76% is the accuracy to find out whether they are actually the same handles. Ah, so let me show you some uh, why. So if you remember the motivation that I started off with is this sending this advertisement to people. I don't want to waste my money. Just let's go back and connect to the motivation also. There are, if, I, if uh, PK or NPTEL wants to send out advertisement to all the students who are on Facebook and Twitter, we have to send this information to only one user only once. You don't want to duplicate and waste money. That's the motivation I started. But the motivation can be many other things. Here are some examples also. So in this case, if you see the sentiments of the user for a, let's take any topic that you take, the one on the left is on Facebook, the one on the right is on Twitter. You really want to understand whether the sentiment, for example, just look at this. You want to understand whether the sentiments of these people are expressed on uh, uh, Facebook and Twitter. Are they same? Or if they are same or if they are different, are they the same user? So that you can actually measure that the negative sentiment of any topic is not a sum of all negative sentiments in all social networks, but only the unique people that you want to take a note of, right? Because if I say something positive in Facebook and I am the same person who is saying positive in Twitter, it is not, if you, you can't measure the positivity as twice, but it's only once because it's only one person sentiment. Right? So that's another motivation. The other motivation also that uh, the other reason why this uh, identity resolution is an interesting problem is because you can actually look at uh, even law enforcement can actually use this which is somebody uploaded a, a malicious video on YouTube and there is another handle which uploaded the same video on Twitter. Now I want to find out whether it's the same person who is posting it. Somebody is actually speaking uh, against some people or some organization on Twitter and there's another handle which is speaking uh, against some persons or some organization in, in a different network. I want to know whether it's the same person because they don't want to be wasting their time in assuming that it's two people and wasting time in finding two people but it's only one person that they have to chase and catch. Right? So that's the motivation. That is also another motivation to actually find out uh, whether these two handles are same or not. Okay. So there's very interesting uh, motivation for uh, doing this work and there's a lot of interesting things one could actually try out. So here is the uh, last uh, takeaway uh, from uh, this part, which is profile linking may be necessary for many organizations as, as the questions that we said, I don't want to waste my money. I want to actually understand whether how, who, how many people have positive, what is the, what is the volume of actually positivity or negativity, or I want to find out who uh, is actually speaking online and uh, to link users. And the conclusion from this work is that essentially you don't have to only uh, bank on the current handles that people have, current information that people have, even using the ones that are from the past can actually improve the uh, efficiency, accuracy of the work. And that's Pardi uh, who's in the picture who just graduated with a PhD from the work that she did on this topic. I'm going to leave uh, you for this week just to try this out. We can probably connect this to the uh, quiz that we have or homework that we have for the course also. But here is what I want to try uh, you to try. Take two of your accounts on your two different social networks, which is Facebook and Twitter. Let's just stick to only Facebook and Twitter. Just take these two handles list down all the things that you can actually do 
find out various ways in which you can actually link these two accounts. List the features. Features just we talked about, right? Uh, these ones or there could be many others also. List down uh, these and uh, list down things that you will change in the profile to make them look two different account networks also. You could do both ways. You could do list down things that you will uh, change to make it to different account or list down things that you will do to make it the same account, right? Share it in the forum. Let's see what uh, uh, you people actually come up with. I hope the activity is clear. It's, uh, take your Facebook account, take your, uh, take your uh, Twitter account, list down the features that are available that you think you can actually connect with the accounts and uh, list that's the first output second output is list down all the things that you will do to make it look same that's the, the second account second output the third output is list down all the things that you will do which will make that it's two different accounts okay. So that's all I had for this week. That is uh, 8.1. I'll actually continue in a different topic uh, when I start off with 8.2.